Uh, I greet you with the Islamic greetings of peace and welcome you to the stream. Uh, like I mentioned, if it's your first time, we're reading the Quran in English and uh, we're on the 20th section, the 20th juz. We left off on Surah and Neml. And uh, we had some wonderful guests last time. So I encourage you, if you're a non Muslim, to uh, please wait for the reading to be concluded. That way, that I can host you graciously with any questions that you may have. With respect to the Quran, anytime that you approach the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, what you want to do is you want to make a physical ablution, set your intention straight so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, can give you an opening as you approach his book uh, and his message with sincerity. Once you've made the ablution and you've set your intention straight, you say, I would be lahim in a shaitan regime, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, which is seeking refuge from the accursed shaitan. And you're seeking refuge uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via his uh, two blessed names of most gracious and most merciful. All right, with that being said, uh, let's pick up pretty much right where we left off. Before I begin, I just want to preface once again, I'm not a scholar, so these are my own personal reflections through this reading. Uh, side by side with me, I do have uh, Tafsir Sadi, and Sadi is a scholar, so he can provide us some additional detail within the literature should we find some points of interest. All right, without further ado, uh, we are on the 20th juz, and we're in chapter 27, verse 56. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, but the answer of his people was not except that they said, expel the family of Lot from your city. Indeed, they are people who keep themselves pure. So uh, basically what was going on is there was a form of male-on-male uh, uh, -male interaction, homosexuality that was happening. And uh, now that story is continuing to pick up. Uh, so we have sa we saved him and his family, except for his wife. We destined her to be one of those who remained behind. And we rained upon them a rain of stone, and evil was the rain of those who were warned. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, praise be to Allah and peace upon his servants whom he has chosen. Is Allah better or what they associate with him? More precisely, is he not best who created the heavens and the earth and sent down for you rain from the sky, causing to grow thereby gardens of joyful beauty, which you could not otherwise have grown the trees thereof? Is there a deity with Allah? No, but they are a people who ascribe equals to him. So remember, one of the fundamental things in Islam is not ascribing partnerships uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, in any way, shape, whatsoever. And this includes the partnerships of your own personal desires. So if you find that you have uh, a thought saying that you have a better way than the way that the Creator had destined for you, this is a very, very troublesome thought. Okay. Uh, is he not best who made the earth a stable ground and placed within it rivers and made for it firmly set mountains and placed between the two seas a barrier? So once again, this is referencing to the um, miraculous nature of the seas, right? And consider and ponder how a man 1400 years ago could have known this, especially in the Arabian desert, um, that there's a, a barrier between two seas. Is there a deity with Allah? No, but most of them do not know, meaning they're following conjecture or they're following their own personal desires or the whims of their forefathers. Basically, they're not upon certainty. Is he not best who responds to the desperate one when he calls upon him and removes evil and makes you inheritors of the earth? Is there a deity with Allah? Little do you remember. Is he not best who guides you through the darkness of the land and sea and who sends the winds as good tidings before his mercy? Is there a deity with Allah? High is Allah above whatever they associate with him. Now, interestingly enough here, um, you know, providing guidance, uh, guidance through the darkness, not only is that, uh, can that be taken introspectively in a sense that when somebody's personally lost, all they would have to do is visit the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of his prophet, peace be upon him, and uh, they'd be able to navigate the, the whatever type of uh, circumstance they're dealing with, but also within the land and the sea. So the stars are used as a form of navigation, and who's the one that illuminates those stars, right? And then in regards to the winds of the good tidings before his mercy, this is in reference uh, probably to the rain because there was earlier discussions uh, within earlier chapters. 
All right, carrying on. <clears throat> is he not best who begins creation and then repeats it and who provides for you from the heavens and the earth? Is there a deity with a law? Say, produce your proof if you should be truthful. And um, I'm starting to notice a repetition of this, right? Is there a deity with a law? Is there a deity with a law? Uh, is there a deity with a law? How can you think this way, basically? So he is really trying to press that point in of the lack of partnership, right? And, and uh, rightfully so. Say, none in the heavens and the earth knows the unseen except Allah, and they do not perceive when uh, they will be resurrected. Rather, their knowledge is arrested concerning the hereafter. Rather, they are in doubt about it. Rather, they are concerning it blind. And those who disbelieve say, when we have become dust, as well as our forefathers, will we indeed be brought out of the graves? We have been promised this, we and our forefathers before. This is not but legends of the former peoples. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, proceed, i.e. travel through the land and observe how was the end of the criminals. And grieve not over them or be in distress from what they conspire. And they say, when is the fulfillment of this promise, if you should be truthful? Perhaps it is close behind you, i.e. very near, some of that for which you are impatient. And indeed, your Lord is the possessor of bounty for the people but most of them are not grateful. Again, just a moment of personal reflection in regards to um, the minor hour, which is people's uh, assigned time to pass away, right? The world would be in absolute chaos if people knew when they would die, right? Um, not only would uh, uh, like the chaos uh, just spread like crazy, but um, imagine knowing uh, the, the manner in which you would pass away as well. So it's a very big blessing that we don't know uh, when we're going to pass away. So uh, when he says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says like something like this, perhaps it is close behind you, right? Meaning that um, you should be aware that it does exist and that um, it's a blessing that you don't know when it is. But, uh, you know, take heed basically, right? And indeed, your Lord knows what their breasts conceal and what they declare, meaning what's secret and what's what's out in the open. And there is nothing concealed within the heavens and the earth except that it is a clear, it's in a clear register. Indeed, this Quran relates to the children of Israel most of that which they disagree. Now it would be um, just curious to see if we can get a little bit of expansion on. Uh, ayah number 76. So uh, let me just jet down there really quickly to see if there was a particular event that it was talking about. And it could have been something in regards to uh, future messengership and so on. Here Allah tells us how the Quran confirms and supersedes the previous scriptures, and it explains and clarifies that which was ambiguous and unclear therein, and that concerning which the children of Israel differed. The Quran speaks about that in such a way as to remove any confusion and explain the correct view concerning the matters in which they differed, as it is of such a majestic nature and very clear, and it dispels all differences and clarifies everything upon that is unclear. It is the greatest blessing that Allah has bestowed upon his slaves, but not everyone responds to the blessing with gratitude. Hence, Allah tells us that it is uh, its benefit, light, and guidance are only for believers. And verily, it's, uh, it is a guidance that saves from misguidance and confusion and mercy that gives comfort and puts straight their religious and worldly affairs for the believers. That is, those who believe in it and accept it, reflect on it and ponder its meanings. They will attain through its guidance. Uh, uh, they will attain through it guidance to the straight path and mercy that leads upon happiness, triumph and success. So um, let's see if there's anything slightly before that. It doesn't look like there is uh, in regards to a particular reference. Um, but once again, there is a lot of uh, confusion within the previous scriptures and hence the corruption, right? So alhamdulillah for the Quran being sent down so it could clear us uh, of that false navigation. And indeed, it is a guidance and a mercy for the believers. 
Uh, indeed, your Lord will judge between them by his wise judgment, and he is the exalted in might, the knowing. So rely upon a law. Indeed, you are upon the clear truth. Indeed, you will not make the dead hear, nor will you make the deaf hear the, uh, the call when they have been, excuse me, when they have turned their backs retreating. And you cannot guide the blind away from their error. You will only make hear those who believe in our verses, so they are Muslims, i.e. submitting to Allah. And when the word decree befalls them, we, uh, we will bring forth for them a creature from the earth speaking to them, saying that the people were of our verses not certain in faith. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is verse number 82. That is, when the time for the fulfillment of the warning comes, which Allah has made inevitable and has ordained its time, we will bring forth to them out of the earth a beast, or one of the beasts of the earth, not of the he uh, heavens. This beast will tell them, that is, it will speak to the people and tell them that the people did not have certain faith in our signs, the reason being that the people's knowledge and faith in the signs of Allah is becoming weak. Uh, and now there is a footnote here. Uh, the warning refers to the punishment of the day of, of resurrection. This verse speaks of one of the pot, uh, portents of that day. Therefore, Allah will cause this beast to emerge as one of his wondrous signs to prove to the people what they were doubting. This beast is the famous beast that will emerge at the end of time and will be one of the portents of the hour. So it's a major sign. Uh, as it mentioned in many hadiths, uh, there is no sound evidence to describe it or say what kind of animal it will be. This verse only indicates that Allah will bring it forth to the people and that it speaks, that its speaking will be something extraordinary and will be one of the proofs of the truth of what Allah said in his book and Allah knows best. Okay, uh, very well. So obviously one of the major signs of the day of judgment, I encourage you to take a look at that in regards to the beast. Um, from my own personal reflection, I think it just, it, it knows whether or not somebody's a believer or a disbeliever, right? Um, and it'll tell you, right? So, uh, feel free to, uh, dig deeper into that if that subject does interest you indeed. And remember to consult proper scholarship on it, um, in regards to the hadith that are referenced. Uh, but so like try avoid going down some, you know, uh, funky rabbit hole. And warn of the day when we will gather from every nation a company of those who deny our signs, and they will be driven in rows until when they arrive at the place of judgment, he will say, did you deny my signs while you encompassed them not in knowledge or what was in that you were doing? And the decree will befall them for the wrong they did, and they will not be able to speak. Do they not see that we made the night uh, that they may rest therein and the day giving sight. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who believe. And warn of the day, the horn will be blown, and whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth will be terrified, except whom Allah wills, and all will come to him humbled. Um, and you see the mountains thinking them motionless. Indeed, they will pass as the passing of clouds. It is the work of Allah who perfected all things. Indeed, he is aware of that which you do. So obviously the, um, the trumpet blowing for the day of judgment, a very, very heavy day indeed. Whoever comes at judgment with a good deed will have better than it, and they from the terror of the day will be safe. And whoever comes with it, an evil deed, their faces will be overturned into the fire. And it will be said, are you recompensed except for what you used to do? Meaning you got what you deserve, right? You reap what you sow. Um, so you should be sowing a bunch of good deeds uh, so that you can reap those good deeds. <clears throat> Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have only been commanded to worship the Lord of this city who made it sacred and to whom belongs all things. And I am commanded to be of the Muslims, i.e. those who submit to Allah, and to recite the Qur'an, and whoever is guided is only guided for the benefit of himself. And whoever strays, say, I am only one of the warners. And say, all praise is due to Allah. He will show you his signs, and you will recognize them, and your Lord is not unaware of what you do. Now, interesting, let me see if uh, that 93rd verse 
see if we can get some. Uh, so he will show you his signs, then you will acknowledge them in such a way that will show you what is true and what is false. So he will inevitably show you his signs, which will give you light in the depths of darkness, so that those who choose to perish by choosing disbelief might do so after seeing clear evidence, and those who choose to live by choosing faith might do so after seeing clear evidence. And that's a reference in Surah Al-Anfal, which is chapter 8, verse 42. Uh, we did cover this one. And your Lord is not unaware of what you do. Rather, he knows your deeds and circumstances and knows the extent of reward for those deeds. He will judge between you with the judgment for which you will be, you will praise him. So you will have no argument against him whatsoever. Now, naturally, I'm, I'm under the disposition that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being um, the, the most just, he gives everybody ample opportunity and gives everybody unique individual guidance relative to their to their situation. That way that there's no complaints saying that, you know, my test was impossible because he tells us that he's not going to give us a test that we can't burden. Right. All right. Wonderful. So on to Surah Al-Qasas, which is the stories. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ta'asin Meem. These are the verses of the clear book. We recite to you from the news of Moses and Pharaoh in truth for a people who believe. Indeed, Pharaoh exalted himself in the land and made its people into factions, oppressing a sector among them, slaughtering their newborn sons and keeping their females alive. Indeed, he was of the corruptors. And we wanted to confer favor upon those who were oppressed in the land and make them leaders and make them inheritors. And establish them in the land and show Pharaoh and his minister Haman and their soldiers through them, uh, that which they had feared. Now, interestingly enough, um, you know, it's an honor to be mentioned in the Quran, right? So you have a person uh, being mentioned in the Quran here. Uh, and we, and not, don't, don't get me wrong, being an honor means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could use you as a, as a form of, um, you know, as a sign to, to take heed, right? Uh, just like Abu Lahab. So same thing with Haman. Right? And we inspire to the mother of Moses, suckle him, but when you fear for him, cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve. Indeed, we will return him to you and will make him one of the messengers. And the family of Pharaoh picked him up out of the river so that he would become to them an enemy and a cause of grief. Indeed, Pharaoh and Haman and their soldiers were deliberate sinners. Right? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is labeling you as a sinner in the Quran, uh, you're in really, really, really deep trouble. And the wife of Pharaoh said, he will be a comfort for the eye, i.e. a pleasure for me and for you. Do not kill him. Perhaps he may benefit us or we may adopt him as a son and they perceive not. And the heart of Moses' mother became empty of all else. She was about to disclose the matter concerning him. Had we not bound fast her heart, that she would be of the believers, right? So uh, the heartache that uh, Musa's mom was going through was pretty significant, right? And it it was almost like a, like when you have like a frog in your throat and you have to just get something out. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tightened her heart up uh, on the steadfastness of belief. And she said to his sister, follow him. So she watched him from a distance while they perceived not. And we had prevented from him all wet nurses before. So she said, shall I direct you to a household that will be responsible for him, for you while they are to him, for his upbringing sincere. So uh, a, a very big blessing and a great way to reunite mother with child, right? He prevented all wet nurses from him, meaning he probably just refused the suckling. So we restored him to his mother that she might be content and not grieve, that she would know that the promise of Allah is true but most of them, i.e. the people, do not know. And when he attained his full strength and was mentally mature, we bestowed upon him judgment and knowledge, and thus do we reward the doers of good. So you're going to, anybody that's a doer of good, you're going to uh, get bestowed judgment and, and sound knowledge, right? And remember, these things work hand in hand, and we're encouraged to seek knowledge so that we can better our judgment. And he entered the city at a time of uh, inattention by its people and found therein two men fighting, one from his faction and one from among his enemy. And the one from his faction called for help to him against the one from his enemy. So Moses struck him and unintentionally killed him. 
Key point being unintentional. Moses said, this is from the work of Satan. Indeed, he is a manifest misleading enemy. He said, my Lord, indeed, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. And he forgave him. Indeed, he is the forgiving, the merciful. So the moment that the event took place, immediately, immediately after he saw and recognized that it was this was the doings of Shaitan, he immediately sought out forgiveness, which is a lesson for us that if we do stumble and fall, uh, immediately seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, my Lord, for the favor you bestowed upon me, I will never be an assistant to the criminals. And he became inside the city fearful and anticipating exposure when suddenly the one who sought his help the previous day cried out to him once again. Moses said to him, indeed, you are an evident, persistent deviator. So now he recognized that this person was also problematic. And when he wanted to strike the one who was an enemy to both of them, he said, oh, Moses, do you intend to kill me as you killed someone yesterday? You only want to be a tyrant in the land and do not want to be of the amenders. And the man came from the farthest end of the city running. He said, oh, Moses, indeed, the eminent ones are conferring over you, intending to kill you. So leave the city. Indeed, I am, I am to you of the sincere advisors. So he left it fearful and anticipating apprehension. He said, my Lord, save me from the wrongdoing people. So uh, it's consistent with the theme of persecution for the messengers. And when he directed himself toward Midian, he said, perhaps my Lord will guide me to the sound way. And when he came to the water, i.e. well of Midian, he found there a crowd of people watering their flocks. And he found aside from them two women holding back their flock. He said, what is your circumstance? They said, we do not water until the shepherds dispatch their flock and our father is an old man. So he watered for them. Then he went back to the shade and said, my Lord, indeed, I am for whatever good you would send down to me in need. So what a beautiful supplication, right? <clears throat> I'm not sure what's best for me in this situation. So therefore, please send me exactly what I need. Then one of the two men came to him walking with shyness. Uh, excuse me. One of the two women came to him walking with shyness. She said, indeed, my father invites you that he may reward you for having watered for us. So when he came to him and related to him the story, he said, fear not. You have escaped from the wrongdoing people. One of the women said, oh, my father, hire him. Indeed, the best one you can hire is the strong and the trustworthy. He said, indeed, I wish to wed you one of these, my two daughters, on the condition that you serve me for eight years. But if you complete 10, it will be as a favor from you. And I do not wish to put you in difficulty. You will find me if Allah wills from among the righteous. So this is a believing man. Moses said that is established between me and you. Whichever of the two terms I complete, there is no injustice to me and Allah over what we say is witness. So either the eight years or the 10 years um, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be the best of judges between the two of them, right? And when Moses had completed the term and was traveling with his family, he perceived from the direction of the Mount of a fire. He said to his family, stay here. Indeed, I have perceived a fire. Now, interestingly enough, remember there was a marriage, there was a marriage, right? And now he's traveling with his family. Okay. Um, perhaps I will bring you from there some information or burning wood from the fire that you may warm yourselves. But when he came to it, he was called from the right side of the valley in a blessed spot from the tree. O oh Moses, indeed, I am a law Lord of the worlds. And he was told throw down your staff. But when he saw it writhing as if it was a snake, he turned in flight and did not return. Allah said, O Moses, approach and fear not. Indeed, you are of the secure. So he's giving him reassurance. Insert your hand into the opening of your garment. It will come out white without disease and draw in your arm close to you as prevention from fear for those are two proofs from your Lord to Pharaoh and his establishment. And remember, these were the two proofs that he showed him privately uh, before there was a public humiliation. Indeed, they have been a people defiantly disobedient. Again, reinforcing that characteristic of disbelief. He said, my Lord, indeed, I killed from among them someone and I fear they will kill me. And my brother Aaron is more fluent than me in tongue. So send him with me as support. 
verifying me. Indeed, I fear that they will deny me. Allah said, we will strengthen your arm through your brother and grant you both supremacy so that they will not reach you. It will be through our signs, you and those who follow you will be predominant. But when Moses came to them with our signs as clear evidences, they said, this is not except invented magic. And we have not heard of this religion among our forefathers. And Moses said, Lord, my Lord is more knowing than we or you, if who has come with guidance from him and to whom will be succession in their home. Indeed, wrongdoers do not succeed. And Pharaoh said, O eminent ones, I have not known you to have a God other than me. And now notice um, Pharaoh is proclaiming himself to be God here, which is pretty serious. Then ignite for me, O Haman, a fire upon the clay and make for me a tower that I may look at the God of Moses. And indeed, I do think he is among the liars. So, you know, with just such a foolish task. And he was arrogant and his, uh, he and his soldiers in the land without right. And they thought that they would not be returned to us. So we took him and his soldiers and threw them into the sea. So see how was the end of the wrongdoers. And we made them leaders inviting to the fire. And on the day of resurrection, they will not be helped. So notice that there's going to be uh, leadership on the day of resurrection. And there, if you are a follower of bad people, you're going to be arisen with those leaders. And then you're going to argue amongst each other and them. And we caused to overtake them in this world a curse. And on the day of resurrection, they will be of the despised. And we gave Moses a scripture after we had destroyed the former generations as enlightenment for the people and guidance and mercy that they might be reminded. Common theme of being reminded, right? Because we're forgetful. And you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, were not on the western side of the mount when we revealed to Moses the command, and you were not among the witnesses to that. But we produced many generations after Moses, and prolonged was their duration. And you were not a resident among the people of Midian, reciting to them our verses, but we were senders of this message. So let me take a look at the tefsir here, because I think we're going to get some uh, beautiful insights. Let me get us down to the um, 44th and 45th verse. Curious to see which clustering, uh, if any, Sadi would take because uh, they do go pretty much hand in hand. So here he says, When Allah told his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, the story of the unseen past, he pointed out that his, this news came from a purely divine source. The messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had no way of knowing about it except through revelation. Hence, he said, you are not there on the western side of the mountain at the time when we decreed from Musa the commission, nor did you witness that event so that it might be said that you came to know this information in that manner. But we brought forth many nations after Musa, and a long time has gone by since then. Knowledge vanished, and Allah's revelations were forgotten. Then we sent you to a time when there was a great need for you and for that which we have taught you and revealed to you. And you, O Muhammad, وسلم, did not dwell among the people of Midian, learning from them the story mentioned in our revelation, teaching them and learning from them so that you may come to know the story of Musa and Midian. Rather, it is we who have sent you as a messenger and revealed to you their stories. That is the story of Musa that you brought is the one of uh, is one of the results of our sending you, and it is a revelation that you had no way of knowing without us sending you and revealing it to you. You were not on the side of the mountain when we called to Musa and commanded him to go to the wrongdoing people and convey to them our message, showing them our signs and wonders that we have related to you. The point is that with regard to the events that happened to Musa salam, in these places and that you have narrated as they happened without adding or subtracting, one of two things must be the case. The first explanation is that you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, were present and witnessed them, or you went to the places uh, where they happened and learned about them from the people there. 
which does not prove that you are the messenger of Allah, because matters that one may narrate to others after witnessing them or finding out about them are commonplace, and that is not something that is exclusively for the prophets. But it is known with certainty that this did not happen, for your friends and enemies alike know that this is not the case. So remember, one of the common arguments is that these stories were passed down or that he, uh, he meaning the Prophet, والسلام, came across somebody's path who knew these stories. So the other explanation must be correct, which is that this has come to you from Allah and is uh, his revelation and message. Thus, the truth of your message is proven by means of definite, uh, definitive evidence, and it is known that Allah has sent you as a mercy to his slaves. Hence, Allah says, but the revelation is sent to you as a mercy from your Lord, so that you may warn people to whom no warner was sent before, namely the Arabs and Quraysh. For the divine message was unknown to them, both at the time when the messenger وسلم, was sent and for a long time before that, in order that they may pay heed by learning what is good and doing it and learning what is bad and refraining from it. If this is what you are, then what they must do is hasten to believe in you and be grateful for this blessing, the worth of which cannot be rightly estimated, for which sufficient thanks can never be given. And, and that's true, right? How are, how are we supposed to thank the one that created thanks and also uh, thank the one that sent us this uh, mercy and this blessing? The fact that he warned the Arabs does not contradict the fact that he was sent to others. For he was an Arab. The Quran that was sent down to him was Arabic, and the first people he called were the Arabs. So the message was addressed first of all to them and to others after that. This is like the verses in which Allah says, Does it seem strange to people that we have sent revelation to a man from among themselves, saying, Warn the people? And this is Surah, Surah Yunus, chapter 10, verse 2. And the other one is, Say, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh, people, verily I am a messenger of Allah to you all. And this is in Surah Al-A'raf, uh, chapter 7, 158. So absolutely beautiful explanations there by Asadi. And he did a, a wonderful job of tying it all uh, together. Okay, um, carrying on. Uh, if disasters, and if not that it is disaster to strike them from what their hands put forth of sin, and they would say, our Lord, why did you not send us a messenger so we could have followed your verses and been among the believers? <clears throat> but when the truth came to them from us, they said, why was he not given like that which was given to Moses? Did they not disbelieve in that which was given to Moses before? They said they are but two works of magic supporting each other. And indeed, we are in, uh, in both disbelievers. Say, then bring a scripture from Allah, which is more guiding than either of them, that I may follow it, if you should be truthful. Now, it's also worth checking out the, um, the tafsir here as well. But if they do not respond to you, then know that they only follow their own desires. And who is more astray than one who follows his desires without guidance from Allah? Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. So let's check out the uh, tafsir for 49. So... see if we can provide just a little bit of um, a little bit of context because he does have it clustered out here uh, okay great then Allah says highlighting their flawed argument and challenging them to produce a third book that was that was more guided say then bring a book from Allah that is a better guide than these two namely the Torah and the Quran so that I may follow it if you are telling the truth but there was no way that they or anyone else could produce something like these two books. For the world had never received, since the time Allah created it, any book like these two in terms of knowledge, guidance, clarity, and mercy for mankind. It would be perfectly fair for the caller to say, my aim is true and guidance and I have brought you this book which contains that and is in harmony with the book of Musa. So we must all submit to these books and follow them because they are guidance and truth. But if you bring me a book from Allah that is more guided than them, I will follow it. Otherwise, I will not give up guidance and the truth of which I am certain for something other than uh, 
than guidance and truth. But if they do not respond to you and do not bring a book that is better guidance than these two, then know that they only follow their own desires. That is, then know that their refusal to follow you is not because they are going to follow some truth that they know or choose some other guidance. Rather, it is because of merely following their whims and desires. Uh, and that's a pretty profound statement, right? So what, what better guidance can there be other than the books that were revealed by Lost Path Ada? Now remember, uh, there's a, a question of preservation in regards to the Torah. So the things that we have today is not the Torah of yesteryear, right? Um, however, the Quran is fully preserved. So uh, we have to default on that because uh, the Torah is just no longer in existence. Now, the things that are mentioned in the Quran and what the Quran says about the Torah, uh, these were the key concepts that remained um, true, right? Because the Quran is the ultimate criterion. Okay, wonderful. Carrying on. And we have repeatedly conveyed to them the word, i.e. the Quran, that they might be reminded. Those to whom we gave the scripture before it, they are believers in it. And when it is recited to them, they say, we have believed in it. Indeed, it is the truth from our Lord. Indeed, we were even before it Muslims, i.e. submitting to Allah. Those will be given their reward twice for what they patiently endured and because they averted evil through good and from what we have provided uh, from they spent. Now, also worth visiting the tafsir for uh, the verse 53, because remember, um, the position of Islam is, has always been around. Uh, that is the most important thing. Um, now, there actually is a, there's some deep lessons that can be taken away from the verses all the way up until 51. Um, and let's see if I can highlight some of them, uh, just because I think that they are pretty important. Some lessons that we learned from this wondrous story. The signs and lessons of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the story he tells us of the previous nations only benefit and enlighten the believers. What the individual learns from these stories will be commensurate with his level of faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only tells the stories for the believer's sake. As for others, Allah does not care about them, and they will receive no light or guidance from these stories. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills something, he prepares the means that lead it to, to that lead to it and bring it about stage by stage, gradually, not all in one go. So that's these are the lessons now step by step. No matter how we how weak an oppressed nation is becomes it should not give in to laziness and give up pursuing its rights or despair of regaining power and reaching a high level especially if it is oppressed allah saved the children of israel who were a weak nation from the captivity of pharaoh and his chiefs and he gave them power and control over their land so long as a nation is subjugated and humiliated and cannot stand up for its rights or speak for itself it will not be able to take care of its religious or worldly affairs and will not be able to play a leading role. Um, Allah showed kindness to the mother of Musa and alleviated the calamity for her by giving her glad tidings that Allah would return her son to her and make him one of the messengers. Allah may decrease some hardship for his slave so as to make him attain greater happiness or to ward off some greater harm as he decreed that intense grief and worry for the mother of Musa that there were means of bringing her son back to her, reassuring her, comforting her, and increasing her joy and happiness. Natural fear of people is not contrary to faith and does not diminish it. So we see in the case of the mother of Musa and Musa himself, faith may increase and decrease, but one of the greatest means of increasing faith and perfecting certainty is having patience in the face of trouble and feeling confident of the help of Allah when calamity strikes. As Allah tells us about the mother of Musa, she would have disclosed who he was and we not and had we not strength, strengthened her heart so that she might maintain her faith in the promise of Allah. And that's in chapter 2810, which is the one that we just are, are covering right now. That is so that her faith would increase and she would be reassured. One of the greatest blessings of Allah to his slave and one of the greatest ways in which he helps his slave in his affairs is his making him steadfast and strengthening his resolve at the time of fear and overwhelming calamity thus enabling him to say and do the right thing. This is in contrast to the one who is overwhelmed by worry, fear, and panic. 
He does not think straight and loses his focus, so he is not able to help himself in any given situation. Even if a person knows that the divine will and decree and the promise of Allah will inevitably come to pass, he should not neglect to take proper measures as Allah has instructed, and that is not contrary to faith in the promise of Allah. Allah promised the mother of Musa that he would return to her, uh, her, her son to her, and yet she took measures to bring him back, and she sent his sister to track him down and find out where he was, which is actually a pretty profound takeaway. It is permissible for a woman to go out and attend to her own needs and to speak to men provided that there is no reason for caution as the sister of Musa and the two daughters of the man of Midian did. It is permissible to receive payment for raising and breastfeeding a child and to help someone to find a woman who will do that. By his mercy towards his weak slave women, he wants to honor Allah may show him some of his signs and proofs so as to increase him in faith. As Allah returned Musa to his mother so that she would know that the promise of Allah is true. Killing a disbeliever who has a covenant with the Muslims or who is regarded as being under a covenant with them on the basis of custom is not permissible. Musa regarded his killing of the Egyptian disbeliever as a sin and he asked Allah uh, to forgive him for it. The one who kills people unlawfully is regarded as one of the tyrants who spread mischief in the land. And again, this is common in the threat of Islam in regards to preservation of, and the sanctity of life. The one who kills people unlawfully and claims that he only wants to put things right in the land and deter evildoers is a liar and is spreading mischief. As Allah tells us that the Egyptian said, do you intend to kill me as you killed a man yesterday? Your aim is only to become a tyrant in the land. You do not intend to be one of those who put things right. Allah said this by way of approving, uh, approving of these words, not saying that they were incorrect. Telling someone what is being said about him by way of warning him of some evil that may befall him is not regarded as spreading malicious gossip. In fact, it may be obligatory as that man came and told Musa by way of offering sincere advice and warning him. If a person fears that he may be killed or harmed, if he stays where he is, he should not allow himself to be destroyed or surrender to that. Rather, he should leave, as Musa did. If there are two choices that will lead to harm, but an individual has no alternative but to choose one of them, he should choose the one that leads to lesser harm, as Musa did when he had the choice of either remaining in Egypt, but he would be killed, or going to some distant land to which he did not know the route, and he had no guide to show him the way except his lord. But this was more likely to lead to safety than the first option, so Musa chose it. With regard to one who is researching an issue of knowledge and needs to give a verdict, if he cannot be certain that one of the two views is correct, he should seek the guidance of his Lord and ask him to guide him to the correct view after sincerely searching for the truth, for Allah will not disappoint one who is like that. This is what Musa did when he, sent, uh, when he set out for Midian. As he headed towards Midian, he said, I hope my Lord will show me the right way in my journey. Showing mercy to people and being kind to them, whether you know them or not, is one of the characteristics of prophets. That kindness is included watering, stock, uh, watering the livestock and helping those who are unable to help themselves. It is recommended to offer supplication explaining one's situation and what one needs, even though Allah knows it well, because he loves for his slaves to beseech him and express his humility and need for him. As Musa said, O oh my Lord, I am in need of whatever good you may bestow upon me. Modesty and shyness, especially in people of dignity and noble character, are praiseworthy characteristics. Offering recompense for favors and kindness is an attitude that has existed since the time of the earlier generations. If a person does something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then receives recompense without having had that in mind from the outset, he is not to be blamed for that. Musa accepted the recompense for his act of kindness from the man of Midian, although he had not sought it and had never thought of receiving any recompense. It is permissible to hire someone to tend sheep and do similar tasks that may not be well defined and may be worked out on the basis of custom. It is permissible to hire someone in return for benefit, even if that benefit is in the form of marriage. A man may offer his daughter in marriage to another man whom he has chosen for her, and there is nothing wrong with that. 
The best worker whom a man may employ is the one who is strong and honest. One of the best good of good attitudes and manners is to show kindness towards workers and servants and not impose too much work on them. Because Allah tells us that the man of Midian said, I do not intend to make things difficult for you. You will find me if Allah wills an upright man. It is permissible to make contracts for work and other matters without witnesses because Musa said, and Allah is witness to what, they, uh, to what we say. Allah caused clear signs and miracles to occur at the hand of Musa, such as the snake, his hand turning white without harm, and the protection that Allah granted to Musa and Harun against Pharaoh and the drowning. One of the greatest punishments that may befall a man is to become a leader in evil, and that will be commensurate with the level of his opposition to the revelations and signs of Allah. By the same token, one of the greatest blessings that Allah may bestow upon his slave is to make him a leader in good so that he guides, uh, he is guided and guides others. This story offers proof for the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as this story is narrated in detail uh, in accordance with what really happened and in a way that confirms the message of the messengers and supports the clear truth without him, uh, without him having been present at any of these events or having visited any of these places. He never read or studied anything about any of these matters or discussed them with any of the people of knowledge. It is nothing but the message of the most gracious, most merciful, and revelation that was sent down to him by the most generous, the bestower of blessings, so that he might warn thereby people who were ignorant and who had never been warned before or received any message. Uh, blessings and peace of Allah be upon the one whose very words indicated that he was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and whose instructions and prohibitions signaled to wise people that this message was from Allah. He could, uh, how could it be otherwise when there was so much evidence to prove, uh, when there was so much evidence to prove, how could it be otherwise when there was so much evidence to prove the soundness of the message he brought namely the earlier and later scriptures, the law he brought, the character of the Prophet وسلم, which was based on the best attitudes and manners, uh, such, as, such as can only be suited to the one who is the best of people and the clear victory granted to his religion and nation, to the extent that his religion reached as far as night and day and his nation conquered most of the world uh, with the sword and spear and hearts were won over with knowledge and faith. His stubborn, uh, but stubborn nations and disbelieving rulers who are standing together against the Ummah are uniting against Islam and plotting against it, scheming to extinguish its light, destroy it and erase it from the face of the earth. But Islam has defeated them and prevailed over them and is still growing its signs and proofs become ever more manifest in every age and new signs emerge which offer lessons to all peoples guidance to those who have knowledge and enlightenment to those who pay heed praise be to allah alone yeah i mean subhanallah that was uh it was very much so worth going into these lessons so alhamdulillah i'm really glad i did that um i did also have a curiosity for verse 53 uh, let's see here it is, oh, it was, uh, and when when it is recited to them, they say we have believed in it. Indeed, is the truth from our Lord. Indeed, we were even before it Muslims. So uh, here's what Asabi has to say about that. Uh, when it's recited to them, they listen and submit, and they say we believe in it, for it is indeed the truth from our Lord, because it is in accordance with what the messengers brought, and it is in harmony with what is mentioned in the previous scriptures. It includes true stories of previous nations, and commands and prohibit uh, and commands and prohibitions that are in accordance with the utmost wisdom. These are the people whose testimony is of significance and whose words may be of benefit, for they only say these words on the basis of knowledge and understanding, as they are peoples of the book and scriptures. The rejection and opposition of others to the truth is flawed and they have no sound argument because they are ignorant or they are acting ignorantly and stubbornly rejecting the truth. Allah says elsewhere, say, believe in it or do not believe. Verily, those who were given knowledge before it, when it is recited to them, fall down on their faces in prostration. 
Um, and that actually makes perfect sense because remember there was a, a common thread. There was people that were upon knowledge that were around that witnessed the proper revelations and then preserved what little witnessing that they had, right? Even if there was uh, generational gaps. And then uh, like I think of uh, Waraka, Waraka bin Nofa, right? He, he was someone of knowledge. And when he saw the prophet, السلام, he immediately, immediately was like, this is a, a messenger of God. And I wish I was around to help you uh, when your people go against you, right? He did not put up any type of a fight. So it was uh, someone like that. And the same thing with uh, Abdullah bin Salman. Um, it's just, they, they know, they recognized it. Okay. All right. Carrying on. Uh, those will be given their reward twice for what they patiently endured and because they avert evil through good and from what we have provided them, they spend. Uh, and when they hear ill speech, they turn away from it and say, for us are our deeds and for you are your deeds. Peace will be upon you. We seek not the ignorant. Indeed, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you do not guide those whom you like, but Allah guides whom he wills, and he is most knowing of the rightly guided. And they, i.e. the Quraysh, say, if we were to follow the guidance with you, we would be swept from our land. Have we not established for them a safe sanctuary to which are brought the fruits of all things as provision from us? But most of them do not know. And how many a city have we destroyed that was insolent in its way of living? And those are their dwellings which have not been inhabited after them except briefly. And it is we who were the inheritors. And never would your Lord have destroyed the cities until he had sent down uh, to their mother, i.e. principal city, a messenger reciting to them our verses. And we would not destroy the cities except while their people were wrongdoers. And whatever thing you people have been given, it is only for the enjoyment of worldly life and its adornment. And what is with Allah is better and more lasting, so will you not use your reason? Then is he whom we have promised a good promise, which he will meet, i.e. obtain, like he for whom we promised enjoyment of worldly life, but, but then he is on the day of resurrection among those presented for punishment in hell? Obviously not, right? Obviously not. And we warn of the day he will call them and say, where are my partners which you used to claim? Those upon whom the word will have come into effect will say, Our Lord, these are the ones we led to error. We led them to error just as we were in error. We declare our disassociation from them to you. They did not use to worship, i.e. obey us. And it will be said, invoke your partners and they will invoke them, but they will not respond to them. And they will see the punishment if only they had followed guidance, right? So if only they had followed the way of Islam and the way of the uh, the messengers, Islam, and mention the day he will call them and say, what did you answer the messengers? But the information will be unapparent to them that day, so they will not be able to ask one another. As for one who had repented, believed, and done righteousness, it is expected, i.e. promised by Allah, that he will be amongst the successful. And your Lord created what he wills and chooses not for them what is the choice. Exalted is Allah and high above what they associate with him. And your Lord knows what their breasts conceal and what they declare. And he is Allah, there is no deity except him. To him is due all praise in the first life and the hereafter, and his is the final decision, and to him you will be returned. Say, have you considered if Allah should make for you the night continuous until the day of resurrection, what deity other than Allah could bring you light? Then will you not hear? Say, have you considered if Allah should make for you the day continuous until the day of resurrection, what deity other than Allah could bring you a night in which you may rest? Then will you not see? And out of his mercy, he made for you the night and the day that you may rest therein and by day seek from his bounty and that perhaps you will be grateful. 
and warn of the day he will call them and say, where are my partners which you used to claim? And we will extract from every nation a witness and say, produce your proof, and they will know that the truth belongs to a law and lost from them is that which they used to invent. Indeed, Karun was from the people of Moses, but he tyrannized them. And we gave him of treasures whose keys would burden a band of strong men. Uh, thereupon his people said to him, Do not exult. Indeed, Allah does not like the exultant. But seek through that which Allah has given you, the home of the hereafter, and yet do not forget your share of the world, and do good as Allah has done good to you, and desire not corruption in the land. Indeed, Allah does not like the corruptors. Let's see if we can get a little bit of... Um, expansion on 76 because it did catch my interest just briefly Let's see if uh if there's a little bit of insight there okay <clears throat> so it is clustered here Allah tells us the story of Karun what he did and what happened to him and the advice and exhortation he received Harun was one of the people of Musa. That is, he was one of the children of Israel who were favored above, above all other nations and were superior to them at the time. Allah blessed them greatly, and their well-being was in accordance with their adherence to the right path. But this Harun transgressed and went astray because of what he was given of immense wealth that made him arrogant. We had given him such treasure that is, that is abundant wealth, and their very keys would have weighed down a band of strong men. The word translated here is band, as band refers to a group of between seven and ten men or thereabouts. Even the keys to the storehouse of his wealth would be too heavy for a strong group to carry. And if this is how the, the keys were, then what do you think of the treasures themselves? Um, yeah, a very profound point. Very profound point indeed. Okay, carrying on. He said, I was only given it because of knowledge I have. Did he not know that Allah had destroyed before him of generations those who were greater than him in power and greater in accumulation of wealth? But the criminals about their sins will not be asked. So the, the criminals are going to be um, outright ignored. So he came out before his people to his adornment, those. And it says here, so he came out before his people in his adornment. Those who desire the worldly life said, oh, would that uh, we had like that was given in Karun. Indeed, he is one of, of great fortune. So people see this stuff and they desire it, right? Um, mass amounts of wealth and there's envy behind that. But those who had been given knowledge say, woe to you. The reward of Allah is better for he who believes and does righteousness and none are granted and accept the, uh, granted it except the patient. Now, our Prophet, uh, he wished to pass away with people that were poor, right? And as one of the poor folk as well. So he didn't leave many things behind. I think there was about six or seven items that were um, uh, like left behind by him. There was like a sandal, a toothbrush, a sword. By toothbrush, I mean one of the, either a miswak or like some type of a primitive toothbrush, uh, a single piece of cloth. Everything else was donated, right? And uh, I believe he did say, Ali Sam, that um, the, it's very difficult for a rich person to enter into Jannah. Uh, so, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us content with what we have and not be envious of, of mass amounts of wealth because uh, it may not grant us uh, great benefit. And we caused the earth to swallow him in his home, and there was for him no company to aid him uh, other than Allah, nor was he of those who could defend themselves. And those who had wished for his position previous day began to say, oh, how Allah extends provision to whom he wills of his servants and restricts it. If not that Allah had conferred favor on us, he would have caused it to swallow us. Oh, how the disbelievers do not succeed. So here they're waking up uh, to, the, to the reality. That home of the hereafter we assign to those who do not desire exaltedness upon the earth or corruption and the best outcome is for the righteous. Whoever comes on the day of judgment with a good deed will have better than it. And whoever comes with an evil deed, then those who did evil deeds will not be recompensed except as much as what they used to do. 
And this is an attestation to how the um, test is rigged in your favor, right? So if you are a person that's conducting good deeds, you get rewarded multiple times over. But a bad deed is, is a one-for-one one in like kind, right? Indeed, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he uh, who imposed upon you the Qur'an will take you back to a place of return. Say, my Lord, is most knowing of who brings guidance and who is in clear error. And you are not expecting that the book would be conveyed to you, but it is a mercy from your Lord. So do not be an assistant to the disbelievers and never let them avert you from the verse, verses of Allah after they have been revealed to you. And invite people to your Lord and never be of those who associate others with Allah. And do not invoke with Allah another deity. There is no deity except him. Everything will be destroyed except his face. He is the judgment and to him you will be returned. And that concludes Surah Al-Qasas. Next up we have Surah Al-Ankabut, which is uh, the spider. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim. Do the people think that they will be left to say, we believe and they will not be tried, right? So once you make your attestation of faith, now the, the trial begins, right? Um, so you had a different trial before you were a disbeliever, and now you have the trial of, of believer, uh, right? But we have certainly uh, tried those before them, and Allah will surely make evident those who are truthful, and he will surely make evident the liars. In the same way that he did it in the forms of jihad, in the forms of wealth, in the forms of loss of a whole bunch of things, right? And in the forms of gains of a whole bunch of things, your test could fall in any one of these categories. So, so do those who do evil deeds think they can outrun, i.e. escape us? Evil is what they judge. And whoever should hope for the meeting with Allah, indeed, the term decreed by Allah is coming. And he is the hearing and knowing. And whoever strives only strives for the benefit of himself. Indeed, Allah is free from need of the world. And those who believe and do righteous deeds, we will surely remove from them their misdeeds and will surely reward them according to the best of what they used to do. And again, an attestation to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Not only does he give you extra credit for conducting good deeds, but he's also removing bad deeds. And we have enjoined upon man goodness to parents, but if they but if they endeavor to make you associate with me that of which you have no knowledge, do not obey them. To me is your return, and I will inform you about what you used to do. So obviously you have to be good to your parents, but if your parents are forcing disbelief onto you, you have to stay true to the actual truth, even if it means opposing your parents, right? Um, so don't associate any partnerships with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, uh, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this trial because it is pretty severe. And those who believe uh, and do righteous deeds, we will surely admit them among the righteous into paradise. And of the people are some who say we believe in Allah, but when one of them is harmed for the cause of Allah, he considers the trial, i.e. harm of the people as if it were the punishment of Allah. But... If victory comes from your Lord, they say, indeed, we were with you. It is not Allah, it is not Allah most knowing of what is within the breast of the worlds, i.e. all creatures. And Allah will surely make evident those who believe, and he will surely make evident the hypocrites. And those who disbelieve say to those who believe, follow our way and we will carry your sins but they will not carry anything of their sins. Indeed, they are liars. But they will surely carry their own burdens and other burdens along with their burdens. Um, and they will surely be questioned on the day of resurrection about that which they used to invent. And we certainly sent Noah to his people, and he remained among them a thousand years minus 50, and the flood seized them while they were wrongdoers. But we saved him and the companions of the ship, and he uh, and we made it a sign for the worlds. And we sent Abraham when he said to his people, Worship Allah and fear him. That is best for you if you should know. You only worship besides Allah idols, and you produce a falsehood indeed. 
uh, uh, and you produce a falsehood. Indeed, those you worship besides Allah do not possess for you the power of provision. So seek from Allah provision and worship him and be grateful to him. To him you will be returned. And if you people deny the message, already nations before you have denied. And there is not upon the messenger except the duty of clear notification. Have they not considered how Allah begins creation and then repeats it? Indeed, that for Allah is easy. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, travel through the land and observe how he began creation. Then Allah will produce the final creation, i.e. development. Indeed, Allah over all things is competent. And this is again an attestation in Islam for the quest of knowledge. He punishes whom he wills, and his mercy upon who, and he has mercy upon whom he wills, and to him you will be returned. And you will not cause failure to Allah upon the earth or in the heaven, and you have not other than Allah any protector or helper. And the ones who disbelieve in the signs of Allah and the meeting with him, those have despaired of my mercy, and they will have a painful punishment. And the answer of his, i.e. Abraham's people, was not but that they said, kill him or burn him, but Allah saved him from the fire. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who believe. And Abraham said, you uh, have only taken other than Allah idols as a bond of affection among you in worldly life. So two things come to mind here. First off, I mean, imagine how serious uh, they were about their worship. Right. If you came into questioning it, um, it doesn't matter if, if they even they knew you. Right. You weren't even a stranger. They were just like, hang him. You know, it's crazy. And then in regards to um, and Abraham said, you have only taken other than a law idols as a bond of affection amongst you, meaning you guys cared so much about your social bonds and your social well-being with each other that you put them even above God. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Um, what kind of an arrogant and a, you know, egotistical position that is. Then on the day of resurrection, you will deny one another and curse one another and your refuge will be the fire and you will not have any helpers. Any of those bonds that you were trying to build up, they're just going to completely backfire. And Lot believed him. Abraham said, indeed, I will emigrate to the service of my Lord. Indeed, he is the exalted in might, the wise. And he will, uh, and we will give to him Isaac and Jacob and placed in his descendants prophethood and scripture. And we gave him his reward in this world. And indeed, he is the hereafter, uh, he is in the hereafter among the righteous. And mention Lot when he said to his people, indeed, you commit such immorality as no one has preceded you uh, with from among the worlds. And you guys really are just way off the bandwagon, right? Indeed, you you approach men and obstruct the road and commit in your meetings uh, every evil. And um, the answer of his people was not but that they said, bring us the punishment of Allah if you should be of the truthful. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at the stuff that's happening in modern times, right? Um, and you can take a look at the hadith where the Prophet Islam said that there will come a time where men will be marrying men. Okay, not like previous times of Lot where they were just engaging in uh, sexual immorality, but the actual marriage would be occurring, right? And Sadaqah Rasulullah, this is exactly what's happening today. So the, um, if back at the time, uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in the time of Lot where men were approaching men, was never, no one has proceeded with this in any of the worlds, right? Where are we at today, right? We are like really just not good, right? He said, my Lord, support me against the corrupting people. And when our messengers, i.e. angels, come to Abraham with the good tidings, they said, indeed, we will destroy the people of that, i.e. Lot city. Indeed, its people have been wrongdoers. And, and, and one other thing, too, um, sorry, these thoughts just kind of pop into my head, but pair what's happening now with everything else. So take a look at all the messengers' stories, you guys, and take a look at how it's 
today is a culmination of everything. And that, to me, is an attestation that the Quran is the final revelation. Because it's, it gave us insight into all the stories. And then it said, this is going to be the, the, this is going to withstand the test of time. And then when the major signs start happening, remember, there's no new revelation. You're going to see everything coming together, right? Everything coming together. And then boom, the major start, the signs start happening. They start dropping off like pearls, right? Um, Abraham said, indeed, within it is Lot. They said, we are more knowing of who is within it. We will surely save him and his family, except his wife. She is to be of those who remain behind. And when our messengers, i.e. the angels, came to Lot, he was distressed for them and felt for them great discomfort. They said, fear not nor grieve. Indeed, we will save you and your family, except your wife. She is to be of those who remain behind. Indeed, we will bring down on the people of this city punishment from the sky because they have been defiantly disobedient. And we have certainly left of it a sign as clear evidence for a people who use reason. And to Midian, we sent their brother Shu'aib, and he said, O oh, my people, worship Allah and expect the last day and do not commit abuse on earth, spreading corruption. But they denied him, so the earthquake seized them and they became within their home, corpses fallen prone. And we destroyed Ad and Thamud, and it has become clear to you from their ruined dwellings, and Satan had made pleasing to them their deeds and averted them from the path, and they were endowed with perception. And we destroyed Karun and Pharaoh and Haman, and Moses had already come to them with clear evidences, and they were arrogant in the land, but they were not outrunners of our punishment, and there's no escape. So each we seized for his sin, and among them were those upon whom we sent a storm of stones, and among them were those who were seized by the blast from the sky, and among them were those who we caused the earth to swallow, and among them were those who we drowned, and Allah would not have wronged them, but it was they who were wrongdoing themselves. Now, subhanAllah, uh, we haven't arrived to the surah yet, but um, this makes me think of Surah al um, <clears throat> where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly says that uh, we have sent down this Quran, so will, will people not reflect on it, right? And he tells us uh, each of the cities and the different types of punishments that have taken place. Um, so notice that he's, he's flexing here in a sense of what he's capable of doing and that each punishment was befitting. Uh, I think he says, uh, So, um, you know, really just thinking about that, uh, I, you know, Subhanallah that I caught this and uh, I never really read this particular ayah like that. Okay. Um, the example of those who take allies other than Allah is like that of uh, the spider who takes, i.e. constructs a home. And indeed, the weakest of the home is the home of the spider if they only knew. Indeed, Allah knows whatever they, whatever thing they call upon other than him, and he is exalted in might of the wise and uh, these examples we present to the people, but none will understand them except those of knowledge. Allah created the heavens and the earth in truth, and indeed, in that is a sign for the believers. Recite, O Muhammad sallallahu what has been revealed to you of the book and establish prayer. Indeed, prayer prohibits immorality and wrongdoing, and the remembrance of Allah is greater and Allah knows that which you do. So notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us um, the shield that was that is provided for us, which is establishing salah, establishing co connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, along with seeking knowledge, right? So when you have knowledge, which is what you're encouraged to do, your salah will increase, your hushua will increase, and naturally you're going to have a better shield. Uh, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that seek sincere knowledge as well as make us of those that are sincere in our prayers and uh, elevate us in our connection with him subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Wonderful. This concludes the 20th juz, you guys. So uh, let me conclude with Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabi ala Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali wa ashabi Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidun Majid. Allahumma barik ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabi ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali wa ashabi Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidun Majid.